Yeah. Hi everyone, thanks for coming to No Lake County. We are being filmed, that's why she was saying stop. Before we get started with today's subject, I just wanted to uh, say that the refreshments are provided by the Friends of the Library. And there's little pamphlets back there if anybody wants to join. They are a great group to join. They help us a lot with buying our books and refreshments and other things. I also have a newsletter back there if, if you want to see what else is going on the rest of the month. Next week I am doing, at the same time next week, I'm doing a class on cooking. So if anybody's interested Yay. in coming for that. What are you cooking? We're doing um, cooking for singles and couples. <gasps> Some tips and things to how to cook small amounts. <laughs> and um, there's a little card back there for next month. We're doing a whole month on oral history. We got a grant. We're giving out free books on oral history and there'll be some programs at the museum and here and in Middletown. So next week, uh, or next month, we're going to have an oral history panel for the um, fires, this, people involved with the fires this last month. <coughs> so that'll be fun, a history on what happened with them. And without further ado, Carolyn Rutland's here, Rattan is here, from the Clear Lake Environmental Research Center. Thanks. Thank you so much, Amy. Thank you so much for hosting this talk. Um, I've given this talk a number of places, um, and, um, and I will continue to do so, obviously. Um, but I really appreciate coming to this side of the lake. Um, I'm usually talking at the other side of the lake. Um, so I am Carolyn Rutan. Um, I, I wear two hats. One hat is I work for um, county government. I'm the Invasive Species Program Coordinator for the Department of Water Resources for the county. But that is my uh, daytime job during working hours. Um, today I am here um, as director of the Clear Lake Environmental Research Center, um, which is the nonprofit corporation that I have created with my colleague Will Evans and a number of other people um, to bring science to the shores of this lake permanently. So, um, if you don't all mind, I'm going to sit down um, for this presentation. Um, I. The reason why I'm sitting down is because I want this to be uh, less formal. I want to feel a part of you, the audience, and I want you to be able to ask me a question anytime, um, because hopefully my, my talk will generate um, a lot of questions. Rather than me fiddle with the electronics that I'm not very good with and mess everything up and not be able to do a thing, I think I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, so, um, what is CLERC? CLERC is the acronym for the Clear Lake Environmental Research Center. Um, it is a 501c3 nonprofit corporation that was founded in July 23rd, 2014. Um, we are federally and state recognized as a nonprofit corporation. And um, we want, the reason we exist is to bring um, education to the shores of the lake and in terms of, of looking at the lake and um, bring scientific research to the shores of the lake. We've had science on and off here for pretty much ever. But, but it's never stayed, it's never been a part of our county. Um, what I want to do is make it permanent. 
so that scientists can use a facility on the shores of this lake all the time, all year round, whenever they want. Um, so other things that we are hoping to do with CLERC are we want it to be um, a world-class conference facility. We want people to have conferences here, like, for instance, the Western Aquatic Plant Management Society, the North American Lake Management Society. I want, I want this to be a center for stuff related to the lake, to any lake, to lakes in the world. So um, we, we want to be able to bring scientists here, educators. Uh, unfortunately, I have a hard time um, delineating between scientific research and education. So I apologize if I go on my scientific research kick because I'm a scientist. But, but to be honest with you, education is what scientific research does. It informs us, so therefore it's educating us. So that, that's why I just have a little bit of a hard time. Um, but educators will come here because we will give them a facility with a boat and everything else they need to get students, children, um, whoever, even adults, onto the lake so that they can be informed of what exactly a lake is, what does it do, why does it exist, um, and the very, very special features of Clear Lake, um, and also the not so special features of Clear Lake. Um, so now again, I want I want to be sure you <clears throat> you're all sitting here listening to me as this is something not affiliated with the County of Lake at all. Um, the reason why we exist as a nonprofit corporation is because we did not want to be related to any specific entity. Because, for instance, if we marry ourselves to a university, a specific university, then we would be drawn into following their philosophy. And I don't want to do that. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the background um, to the formation of CLERC is Will Evans, who is now the Deputy Director of the Department of Water Resources in this county, um, he was out at um, the um, Haldi Harbor in Nice a few years ago, and, and he's thinking to himself, now he knew the county owned Haldi Harbor and was thinking of, of selling it um, for a... Um, boutique hotel kind of thing and he's thinking this isn't gonna work so then he thinks further and then he thinks well you know at the time we were having tremendous um, hazardous algal blooms can we please turn the conversation around and be thinking of this in maybe in terms of it being a resource actually people wanting to come here because we have hazardous algal blooms and yes we can scientists want to study this stuff all over the world because it's weird that we don't know very much about it and I'll go, in, I'll go into that in a bit. Um, so, so what we're trying to do is challenge the assumption that nobody wants to come to Clear Lake. It, it's a horrible green mess um, and, and how can we attract people? We can attract people here. We're going to attract scientists, educators, um, children that want to learn about lakes and their processes. So the benefits to the community will be enormous. I mean, because we're talking about increased tourism because of our educational component. We're going to go into ecotourism. We're going to show our tourists why is this lake so special? Because probably 90% of the people in living in this county don't know that it's the oldest lake in North America. Probably 50% don't even know there's a lake here. I'm, I'm glad it was you that said that, not me, but, but, but I'll have to say I agree with you, everything, yes. So, um, we want to shine a light on Clear Lake, basically. That's what we're all about. And in doing that, getting improving tourism, um, but you know, creating a spot where people will absolutely want to come here because this lake is so special. It's very exciting. 
I mean really exciting. Even I, who have lived here for a whole mess of years, every day I go out there, I see something new. I mean, it, it, it is amazing. Plus, and, and Amy mentioned this a little while ago, every sunset that we have on this lake is different from every other. And some of them are absolutely beautiful. So, um, we're, we're going to give <coughs> teachers and their students a living laboratory. Well, they've always had such, but they didn't know how to use it. But we're going to be, we're going to tell them how to use the, their living laboratory uh, with a means to get on the lake, of course, boats and all that kind of stuff. Um, and also, I want citizens to become more interested in monitoring their watershed, what's around them. So then they start thinking, ah. So this is, this is what I'm living around. I wonder how I can change that, or improve it, or am I degrading it? Or just start asking the questions with regard to the watershed, which is enormous. By the way, um, Clear Lake's watershed is 527 um, square miles, which is absolutely amazing. That's another amazing fact that we have that we need to talk about. Um, Lake Tahoe, just to give you a comparison, 77. That's it. Yep. Wow. So we have something to talk about. So Carolyn, why is that? What, why is what? Why the difference? In why the, why the difference? Because, because of the location. So we are in a rather large valley system and all these valleys are connected, and this is why our watershed is so huge. But every drop of water dropping on that 527 square miles could make its, it, its way to the lake. Whereas in, at Lake Tahoe, it's, it's more mountainous, it's steeper, and a lot of its watershed actually flows in the other direction, actually it never, never winds up in, in Lake Tahoe. So we're also going to be um, co-locating co a lot of different agencies in the same location. And that's always cool, because then they can get to talk to each other, which is an amazing concept. Um, <laughs> and um, the, w we will be, of course, on the ground floor when we have these partnering agencies, um, because we're going to be able to leverage any of their new findings, what they come up with, we're the first guy on the block. They, they, they found it here. They saw it here. So we're going to get the advantage of that. So now um, there are going to be very many more worldwide community benefits. And that is because we're going to be discovering stuff. That's what science is all about. Not that discovery always leads to the end of a question. Scientific discovery leads, normally leads to 50 million more questions to be answered. But then, if we're the Clear Lake Environmental Research Center, then that's good for us. Because we, we, we get to churn out, okay, there's more, more things we need to study here, more science to come here. Um, we will be producing ecological models, and, and this has already been done with our lake. Um, not to a very good effect, but, but we will be able to create ecological uh, models which are going to help us understand what climate change will mean to this state in particular and to the country. Also, um, we're going to be able to study Clear Lake and its own water challenges um, better than we do today. Um, and that's going to lead to discovery and solutions to our water challenges that are going to help other lakes' water challenges throughout the entire world. And any um, molecular or process discovery that the scientists make here at Clear Lake could lead to cures for disease. Who knows? There are two universities currently studying cyanobacteria and the molecules that they are able to produce. One university is looking at a cure for Alzheimer's disease and other neurodegenerative diseases, and the other one is looking at a cure for cancer. And I'm sorry, I, I can't remember which form of cancer, but anyway, they're doing that 
looking at cyanobacteria. Why don't they do it here? We need to advertise it, but they won't let us. <laughs> but they, well, yes, but, but well, that comes back to my shining a light. Uh -huh. what, what are we going to shine a light on Clear Lake for? Mm. Scientific, Grungy, awful, smelly, stinky, no, sci blue? Scientific or discovery. a mm -hmm. maybe cure for cancer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, our current status is we are five directors, the Clear Lake Environmental Research Center, that is is five directors strong with, um, I'm, the, I'm the scientist, we also have David Adam, he is a scientist. Um, David Adam was, funnily enough, the last standing scientist here in the 1970s when the Clear Lake Environmental Research Center actually existed on the shores of this lake and the Carnegie Library here in Lakeport. So, and, and, and actually, when I, when I made the, the name Clear Lake Environmental Research Center, I had no idea that it had existed all these years ago. So, I, and I did get permission to use it again. Um, so, um, that's, that is, um, it, because we have two scientists and David Adam, David is an amazing person. His <coughs> knowledge is unbelievable. Um, so, and then we have another director who is um, a teacher, who is amazing as far as education and the standards of education that are being taught today. Um, then we have a, a business um, person who is amazing with numbers and facilities and businesses and everything else. And then there's Will, of course, who thought of the idea in the first place. Um, the good news is, for our current status, we are in negotiation with uh, Merrimack California University, their Lucerne campus, to use part of that campus <coughs> as our facility. Cool. So then we will have a hook to hang our hat on, and that is going to be huge. When that happens, all I have to do is send out an email to 47 scientists I know throughout the, the, the globe, and they're going to come. They wanted to come. I just, I just don't have anywhere to put them right now. So, so th th this is this is way exciting. Um, and we are, we do have a website, so you can also um, go to that website. Unfortunately, I will have to say something about the website. It has been a little um, less well managed in the um, months since the fire because the person that managed the website was Will Evans, and Will has been just inundated with his county business, which was very important, of course. Um, so, but anyway, I think, I think we're kind of coming a little bit out of the pressure that was on us in, in that respect, so I think the website will be up and going, and there'll be blogs and all that kind of stuff real soon. So now, what are our goals? Um, we want a world-class, I keep calling it world-class. Some people have told me not to call it world-class because, because if it's world-class, we're going to have to think all this metric stuff and all this other stuff from, if we want worldwide scientists to come here, we're going to have to spend a whole ton of money. And, and, and I don't think that's what we want to do. We want to make it, uh, I think, at a level that can be used by, for instance, a scientist at Humboldt State, a scientist at, at Santa Rosa Junior College. At, at make it a little bit more attainable, more um, get atable for just anybody. So we're not going to fill it with these grand machines that do, I don't know, um, so, so um, I probably will need to take away, or have I, the worldwide, yes I did, yes. Okay, so then we're going to um, develop with um, Jill Bolduc, our Director for Education, her help, um, education programs for anybody, adults, kids, I don't care. Um, what do you call it, the, those various levels at your school, the K, the K, K-12. There we go. But, but, but what do they start as? Kindergarten. There you go. Kindergarten to 12th, 12th grade. Yeah. We're going to go through the whole spectrum. Because we want to get the kids when they're little. Mm -hmm. We want to 
stimulate them. Well, I do because I'm a scientist. But, but we want to stimulate them at a young age to ask questions. The more questions that they ask, the better human beings they are going to be. The better able to, to do what they need to do in our community. <coughs> so that, that is, my, my goal is to start them young. And, and, and it, it is really upsetting to me that we do not have a workshop, even a, a, a weekend long workshop, where people could come and study our lake. We don't have such a thing. We need to. It's crazy. It's backwards. So um, we're going to develop the public education programs. Then we're going to partner with the universities. And as I said before, I am not going to have a university come here and say, OK, now we're going to do things the way we think they should be done. No. If you want to come here, you can come here. And you can come here as an independent scientist affiliated with that university and do your study and off you go. Um, and so we are going to stay independent. However, we will have certain rules of engagement with these scientists from other universities. For instance, they will use Lake County resident employees. That, you know, things like this we can, we can deal with because we are a local corporation and we, and we can make those rules. Okay, so then we're going to be able to generate new economic growth because it, when the scientists are here, they need to eat. They need to put gas in their vehicle. They need, they need to do stuff. Um, and hopefully we will be creating new local jobs because the scientists always need gophers. Go do this for me. Go get that for me. So, I have a question. Yeah. <clears throat> Is there one particular part of the lake that's more suited for this than another? No. No, it's absolutely the entire lake. Mm -hmm. No, there isn't. There, there's. The, my goal would be to have, although we're in um, discussion with, with Marymount, mm -hmm. That, that would be our headquarters. But actually, what I would love to see is little satellite places all around the lake. And there's no reason there shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many empty buildings are there on the shores of this lake right now? Mm -hmm. the, the, there's rather a lot. I, I, I wish they were being used. And I wish they were being well used. So our, some of the initial projects we've been talking about are the citizen monitoring. I want, I want volunteers. There's an awful lot of volunteers in this county. People call me all the time asking, uh, what can I do? I'm retired, but I want to stay busy. Do you have anything I can do? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> so, so citizen monitoring is a perfect example of getting people involved with data gathering. We, we need to know more about our lake. We need more numbers. We need more statistics. We need more stuff so that then we can figure out, well, if, <coughs> if, if, if things are going this way with all these parameters on them, then maybe we should do this, that, and the other. So it's, it's just the citizen monitoring, getting volunteers to do that is amazing because otherwise it is very expensive. We're also going to hopefully have a Clear Lake virtual data library. We're going, the Clear Lake Environmental Research Center is going to be the repository of all data known at any time about Clear Lake. So then scientists have just this one place to go to to gain access to all this data. Because we do have a lot of data, but it's 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 in five million different places. <laughs> okay, then um, we're we're talking about doing a cyanobacteria harvesting study. Um, and and another thing we would love to do is a, a monthly environmental education series. Um, because the, the one that they're doing at Marymount um, California University, I don't know whether you've heard of that, that they're doing kind of like a, a monthly talk. And Dr. John Parker talked. Um, Dr. Harry Lyons talked. Um, I can't remember who else is going to be talking there. Kathy but Kohler. There you go. Yeah, Kathy Kohler. They These people are, they're they are wonderful people because their heads are filled with all kinds of stuff. 
and just for them to be able to share a small part of their knowledge with us, I think is wonderful, <coughs> and I think that should be happening more often. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're hoping when we do have a <coughs> facility, that'll be where people can come. Um, we're also talking about a cyanobacteria algae biofuel pilot project. Um, that we're, we are trying to find ways of, of making the cyanobacteria, which is blooming in our lake, become a resource for us. And if it's going to be a valuable resource, that's even better. Uh, and of course, we're, we're going to be um, wanting a science lab, and we're already designing the laboratory in terms of compressed air, water, um, distilled water, um, all, all the various tools of the trade that you need to put in the laboratory. Um, and so why, why environmental education? And, and like I said before, uh, not much different to scientific research. Um, and we can um, use what we already know, which is Clear Lake is an amazing fishery, and it attracts fishermen all the time. And so we've, we've already got a great magnet in terms of fishermen, also water skiing, not so much now, but it used to be really, really big for water skiing, um, at kayaking, canoeing, um, bird watching, um, river, river otter watching. Um, so we, we already have an awful lot of really, really <coughs> cool things going on. Now let's take those people that come here and then open up their minds to the Clear Lake Environmental Research Center so that they can go and find out a little bit more information about why this is so special. Why are the bass in this lake as long as they are? So, um, the, oh, here's my world class, which I will, I will delete the world class. <laughs> Um, a bit, but, but well, that's probably, no, that's but, but that's ecotourism, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, w I would agree with that, yeah. Because um, once, once we get the light shone on our lake, then the word's going to get out. Um, and certainly people from other parts of the world, they love to come and visit something different, something new, something that's not been talked about very much in the past, but it's really big now. Um, so um, I'm hoping that they're going to uh, want to come here in droves, of course. Um, and then while they're here, um, because they get to do it through the Clear Lake Environmental Research Center, they will learn how to be good stewards of a, a lake if they happen to live near a lake. Um, and um, how we can you know, learn more about where we live, our watershed, our uh, water, uh, and you know, ultimately, be um, good good stewards of where we live. Um, and we're going to give them proper facilities. A visitor center is an absolute must, and a visitor center to highlight all these spectacular facts about Clear Lake and its watershed. Um, and then we're going to have um, hands-on environmental education program so that the, the kitties can come, the parents can go off on, on the lake and the kitties get to look at these wonderful tanks of fish or whatever else we want to show them. My, my, my goal is also to have three transparent tubes placed in one in each arm of the lake so that children can walk down the tube and get to see how our lake changes all the way to the bottom. Oh, oh wow. Neat. Good luck. Beautiful, dude. <laughs> um, so, um, okay, that, um, that, this was, was me at the county fair um, with the Clearwick Environmental Research Center booth showing um, that the, these children, that, oh gosh, they, we, we were very, very busy at the county fair because the kids just loved our uh, display because I had a microscope there. So the things, the things that we are, uh, are looking at are absolutely gorgeous. I mean, scientifically, they are they are quite beautiful. This is um, an example of the cyanobacteria that we have in our lake. Um, we probably have every um, cyanobacteria known to man growing in our lake, by the way, because it's as old as it is. 
Um, and uh, cyanobacteria are not new at all. 3.5 billion years? I don't think so. So um, the, they've, been, they've been with us forever. Um, but they are quite gorgeous. That, my favorite is that top left, Gliotrichia. It's absolutely amazing. I have to tell you, cyanobacteria are single-celled organisms. That is not a single cell. That's hundreds of thousands of individual cells. So why did, how the heck did they figure out that they want to grow in that particular formation? Remember, they're individual cells. They don't need anybody else to do anything for their living. But that's what they came up with. So, so what I want to know is who decides to be in the middle and who d decides to be on the outside? Probably the elders are in the middle. <laughs> but, 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 but do we know? I mean, it's... It, and then they provide food for the others when they die. And then everything implodes. Holy moly! <laughs> that is some fascinating insight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now, and, and that, that's Leo Trickier again, top, top right, so it, it's just, it's, it's beautiful. Um, and there's a lot of it in our lake, by the way. Uh, so, uh, we have a whole mess of, of different cyanobacteria. We have a huge information deficit about cyanobacteria as a whole. Nobody knows much of anything about cyanobacteria. Um, and it is true, of course, that we've been worldwide experiencing more blooms, bigger blooms, more serious blooms. Um, and so I have a, um, uh, an alert on my computer um, for cyanobacteria. <coughs> and at this time of year, I get reports from Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and South America of lake closures because of hazardous algal blooms. That, that's how far removed this, this can be. It, it's, it is a worldwide phenomenon. Uh, so the, the, the interesting thing about this group of organisms, cyanobacteria, three and a half billion years old, they exist everywhere. They even exist in polar bear's fur. <laughs> How weird is that? They actually caused the first distinct extinction of life on this earth because they formed the world's first oxygen. They discovered photosynthesis. <laughs> so then before that, they were all, or, or, living organisms were all growing on methane and everything else, not oxygen. So then when oxygen came into the world, oh my God, it killed them all. So, so then it left the cyanobacteria. So we're all pretty much a result of cyanobacteria. And the cyanobacteria that um, created photosynthesis, they created a lot, a lot of other metabolic processes <coughs> too, which we're only just now realizing. The, there is one form of cyanobacteria that even photosynthesizes in far, using far red light. That's black. That's darkness. They photosynthesize in the dark. How cool is that? Do they glow? Huh? Do they glow? No. They're not phosphorescent? Nope. Nope. So, today this group of organisms that we have a whole bunch of in this lake produces 30 to 40 percent of the world's oxygen. So I don't think we should be diddling with them too much. Okay, so now... So back up and say that again. Okay, they, to the, to, today mm -hmm. that group of organisms produces 30 to 40 percent of the world's oxygen. But not in this way. Throughout the world. No, throughout the world. Okay. Yes, sorry. <laughs> That's where I'm sorry. getting confused. But, but, but 30 to 40 percent <coughs> of the good. oxygen we breathe in Lake County comes from the cyanobacteria. Yes. So this is different than the oxygen that's produced in the, in the green belt in the equator. <coughs> or this, this complements that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. 
Does so that add to our clean air? Does that help the Absolutely <laughs> does. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. We'll Which is a that. very, very strange statistic. Yeah. We have the cleanest air in the state and some people believe in the nation. But unfortunately, our health statistics do not reflect that. And they really <coughs> did. That's another reason why I want science here. I, w I want to be able to explain that. Um, I have a question. Yeah. So the oxygen that produced, does that stay in the water? It, it's <coughs> not only does it stay in the water, it will then come out of the water mm -hmm. as a gas. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's continually kind of cycling through the water. It, as, as the oxygen in the air dizzolves in the water, and then it, it, it does a little bit of stuff in the water, and then it comes right out again. It's okay. continually cycling. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that cyanobacteria was responsible for the first extinction. Yes. But how do we know that? How do we know that? Um, I have scientific journals that I can show you to okay. prove that. Yeah, it is a it is a scientific fact. Okay. So it has been researched by enough people of sufficient um, reputation in the scientific community that it is a scientific fact. Okay. Yeah, they caused the first extinction. One more question: Is yeah. there any suggestion that the poor health of the people in Lake County is related to um, the lake, the air, the water? Or could be. Else? Could be. That's that's that, that's why I need the science here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You mentioned Alzheimer's. There yeah. were studies um, back east, I think, in the northeast region, where they're thinking the um, algae and maybe cyanobacteria resulted in Alzheimer's disease. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, there's probably more universities studying that link than universities studying the opposite link. So <clears throat> it, is, it is entirely possible that this group of organisms, remember that they're single-celled organisms, they do not need to live in a colony. But they do. In order for anybody to live successfully in a colony, you need to be able to communicate how do these single-celled organisms do that? They produce a whole ton of different chemicals, proteins. And those proteins are how they signal to each how they talk to each other. So it could be that they create <coughs> some of those chemicals could actually be a cure for Alzheimer's. Other chemicals that they produce could actually pro you know, produce Alzheimer's. So it it, it's just, it's one of those wonderful unknowns that I wish we had more answers to. And we will when we have the Clear Lake Environmental <coughs> Research Center. Does this phenomenon only happen in fresh water or is it going on in the salt water too? All over. The um, cyanobacteria, that group of organisms, does not only exist in fresh water. It exists in salt water. It exists in the desert. It exists in other plants, other animals. They're all over. Universal. Yeah. So, um, they, in fact, one of the reasons why they shut down the uh, crab industry along the California coast this year is because of a cyanobacteria. And, and <coughs> actually, that same cyanobacteria, we do have a form of in our lake. But that form loves salt water. It causes what they call the red tide. Um, and that is um, a very nasty, nasty stuff. So, so this is what our lake can look like when it's got lingvia. That is a particular sign of bacteria um, in dominance. When, when, yeah. What makes cyanobacteria cyanobacteria not something else? <laughs> <laughs> because they are single-celled organisms uh -huh. and they can be differentiated from any other organism by their presence of 
photosynthetic pigments. Mm -hmm. Their disorganization of all cell contents. They have no nucleus. Mm -hmm. They have that the, everything in their cell is in a complete disastrous mess. Mm -hmm. But that's how bacteria are. So, so they don't have any DNA or anything like that. They 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 have they have DNA. Mm -hmm. They have RNA. Mm -hmm. But it's in a form that that is prior to our rather more elaborate structure. Mm -hmm. So no nucleus? No. Okay. No. Nucleus? It's and just is it a double cell wall or a single cell wall organism. It, it can be all, all of the above. Oh. It can, and and not only that they can actually coat the outside of their cells with mucilage. How do they reproduce? How do they, by, by binary fission. They just, they just decide, eh, I need to be two. And, and the mucilage is for them to connect and, and, with each but, other? But, but, but when they divide, they divide as separate cells. You know, what, when, once the division so has been done, it's off. completely two separate cells. They're not. They're, 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 they don't have a linkage between them. Their link. Their only linkage is in the production of these chemicals, which which go into the water or whatever environment they're living in, and then back through <coughs> through the cell wall again. And so it's, this mucilage is like a mucus or yes. some kind of coating or it it, it 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 it's a coating. Okay. So so that so why are they doing that? Maybe so that they won't be eaten. Hmm. Um, w but we don't. W we need more science. Who does eat them? <laughs> good. That's a very good question. There's not a whole lot of things that do eat them, but the things. See, because they are one of the oldest organisms on the face of the earth. Life forms as big as us have learned to deal with that group of organisms when they are doing nasty things like creating toxins. So, I, I, and I always wondered that, why are the ducks swimming around in cyanobacteria blooms and gobbling whatever it is up and they, they, they're still living? Why, aren't, why don't they get sick? Well, it, it's because they have learned how to deal with the toxin. How do you know they don't get sick? Well, need more science. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, there, th this, when I show this picture to other hazardous algal bloom scientists in the world, they always, are amazingly, um, they're, they're, just, they're just overwhelmed. They're, they're blown over by that photograph. They, they, they have most likely never seen anything like it. So that, that's again why I'm saying that you know, the scientists will come because we have these extraordinary things. Is that from the 1970s? That, that is, no, this, is, this was taken in, um, 2010, 20, 2010, and that is in the um, oak's arm of our lake. The keys. Right. So, but, but just, I, I just want, I, this is so amazing to me that I just wanted to bring your attention to the fact that there are cranes standing on those pads of cyanobacteria oh. in the distance. Oh. <laughs> and the water column that you can see, and it's not just a surface mat, it's throughout the water column. So the production that's going on here is enormous. <coughs> so that brings me to say this lake is extraordinarily healthy. <laughs> because otherwise we wouldn't have that production. It's amazing to be able to produce that much biological material. So do you know their cycles yet? 
Do, do I know what? The cycles of them, because when I first moved up here. No, no, no. Not yet. Again, that's why we need science. More here. science, yeah. yeah. Okay, so now it looks like raw sewage and it smells like raw sewage. But this is what we do not want to tell people. We want to look at this. Oh my gosh, look at all that production. Maybe we can use this stuff. Okay, so now, and, and this is how different these organisms can look. This is an aphanosomena bloom in this lake. It, and and it's, it's, it's crazy different from the lingbia. And, and it, you know, when it wants to be dominant, then yeah, we'll go ahead for it. I mean, it's, it's, we don't know, again, we need more science. We don't know which one decides to be dominant. Yes? There's a, um, I forgot what I was gonna say. That's okay. It'll is, come back. It'll come the, back. So is the filamentous algae, is that a cyanobacteria? No. Okay. No. That's something different. Yes. Okay. Filamentous algae is green mm -hmm. algae. Mm -hmm. It is um, a plant. So it's gone through, from bacteria, it's gone through evolution to become an actual plant, mul multicellular plant. Mm -hmm. And so so that's, what, that's why we have to be so careful. That's why you have not heard me say, up to this point in time, blue-green algae. Um, because it's very, very confusing to people to hear the word blue-green algae, and it's not. It, 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 it isn't a plant. It, it, it is, it's nowhere close to an algae. Mm -hmm. so, so that's why I like to use the word cyanobacteria because that's what it is. It is a bacteria, a single-celled organism. Okay, so now all that's to do with cyanobacteria, and, and that would, heck, that's going to be like five or six lifetimes worth of a scientist studying here. So are there any other things that we should be studying here? Well, heck yes. There's a whole mess of things that we can study on Clear Lake. Because Clear Lake is Clear Lake, because we have a, the sulfur bank mercury mine on the shores of this lake, because <coughs> we have these cyanobacteria blooms, because we have a whole mess of organisms that live on the bottom of our lake that nobody knows anything about. Because we have tubes in this lake that go down 60 to 70 feet that are bubbling up we don't know what where there are albino blind catfish living so there's all kinds of things for us to yet discover about our wonderful lake um and and you know you can pretty much name any science like geology geomorphology limnology all these ologies, you could, you could name every, any one of those ologies and we could give them a home here. Well, I could not name limnology. What is that? Limnology is a study of a lake. Okay. It's as easy as that. Okay, so now I, I, want, I want to highlight these two different, there are, there are two different reasons why we want to research Clear Lake. And, and, I, and I want you to think about Tahoe as a comparison here. Um, Clear Lake is like many, many, many other lakes in the world um, because it is highly eutrophic, meaning it's got a whole mess of food in it for all our organisms. It is also polymictic, meaning it mixes very easily and very fast, um, as do other shallow large lakes. And we've, we've, we have been experiencing, with everybody else, very, very severe hazardous algal blooms. But on the other side, Clear Lake is absolutely so unique because, well, it's the largest freshwater lake in, in California, number one, uh, but it's the oldest lake in North America. I mean, it, it, it surely can help us um, figure out what's going to be going on with other lakes in the world that are a little bit younger. And so 
we have 400 feet of sediment on the bottom of our lake. And if you look at that sediment, if you actually take the core of the sediment, then you can get records going back 475,000 years. And that, that is why many of the scientists that want to come here desperately, um, they are going to be dealing with coring and, and looking at the sediment and how that is going to educate us about what's going to happen in the near future or even the far future. Um, and, and again, we have had a long history of very, very short scientific episodes in our research episodes um, in our history on this lake. I just want it all to be, become a permanent um, feature and I want all that data that has been collected from all these various research projects to be in this one repository. Are there other old lakes in the world that have, that are, scientists are following the cyanobacteria or are doing research on at this time? And is there, a, are they experiencing the overabundance? So, you sh so we sh maybe could talk about that. Is there, an, are these other places just going, whoa, we don't know what to do with all this? Uh, m most of them the latter, but there are some of them doing the former, yes. Yeah, there, there are um, lakes that are being studied um, quite well for the cyanobacteria blooms, but they're always doing the studies in terms of that particular lake. Um, and I think, I think we need to take a broader look. And I think Clear Lake would be so useful at doing that because of its size and because of its age. Um, I think you know, doing um, studies in little golf course ponds is, is not going to help us, is not going to educate us in terms of, of the um, larger lakes and reservoirs in the world. Are there any other lakes in the world that we can compare Clear Lake to? That, and say, oh, this is the sister lake in Australia, it's about the same age, it's about the same depth, about the same Thousands, climate. thousands. Uh-huh. Yes. There, there's thousands of lakes, almost identical to ours except for its age. Ah. Uh. That's what stands our lake apart from any, any other. There's only maybe one other lake in the entire world that would vie for a similar <coughs> age. And it's in a similar, it's for a similar reason that our lake is as old as it is. As fast as it's filling in, the bottom is sinking. What's that lake? Is it very old? It's in Russia, right? Yeah, uh, it, um, yes, <coughs> exactly, yes. Yeah, so, so, yeah, I have two. Yeah. I do, well, b because I always think about clearly. Um, but, but, yeah, there is one that is possibly the same age. Um, yeah. But, but, but the, the reason why. The, the lake bottom is actually falling, is not actually known. It's only conjecture. So that's another reason I want science here. I want them, I want them to make me a whole, much, a whole bit more confident that it, it's, it, the lake bottom's dropping because of what we've been told. Uh, it might not be. We don't know. It's just conjecture. Which is what have you been told? We've been told that um, our lake has two faults that run perpendicular, per parallel to each other, <laughs> one on each side, thank you, one on each side of the lake, and those faults are actually being pulled down. Mm -hmm. um, and so the whole lake, particularly the upper arm of our lake, is, is always being pulled down. And it's being pulled down at exactly the same rate as it is filling in with sediment. That sounds good. Maybe. Maybe. But we need more science. <coughs> you know, I, I, I just would like a, a little bit. <coughs> yeah. Carolyn. Year year. Yeah. Do yeah. you have a list of all the unanswered questions? Do I have a list? You know what, I was, that's what I was supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. But because we have your wonderful video, I didn't need to do this. <laughs> okay, so now 
one of the other things we can bring science here to do is to, to um, study invasion. Um, because, again, because it's, it, it goes without saying, if any lake is going to be invaded, our lake is, because it's as big as it is, it has access all over it, um, you don't have to pay to get on Clear Lake, you just get on Clear Lake. Um, and, and so, you know, th th there's a whole mess of reasons why we can be invaded. And, and, and that is a very, um, it, it, it's a very uh, common um, form of scientific research these days. A lot of people are studying invasions. <coughs> And that's okay. that quagga mussel you're specifically talking about is one of the invaders. What, that's one of the invaders that has not been able to invade Clear Lake yet. Uh, this is one that did invade Clear Lake, Hydrilla. Um, that was a photograph I took in 2007. Um, at, this is a plant that we've been trying to eradicate since 1994, and we still have it. And the state still spends a whole hell of a lot of money trying to eradicate it. But we still have done. That's why we need more science. We need to understand more about this plant so that we can control it to the point where we have eradicated it. Um, these are not very nice looking plants of something called um, water hyacinth. <laughs> water hyacinth is um, now an amazingly invasive weed in the delta. And that's what it looks like in Florida. That is not a meadow. That is a lake, just like Clear Lake. It is covered in water hyacinth. So again, Clear Lake Environmental Research Center would hope to bring this subject to people's attention so that they can be another set of eyes on our lake for things that may be brought in, that and may be brought in, and then if we can get on it early enough, we can take care of it. Here's another one, Creeping Water Primrose. Um, and this one, the other two, the, the um, hydrilla was um, brought here um, in an, um, an aquarium. Somebody dumping their aquarium into Clear Lake. Uh, this one got here because it has a gorgeous yellow flower. And somebody thought it would look beautiful on their beach. But that gorgeous yellow flower is now completely covering the Laguna de Santa Rosa, just south of here. Mm -hmm. And they have been dealing with that weed now for the last 15 to 20 years. And there's, I don't think they're ever gonna get rid of it. It's just now, it should be called the Laguna de Creeping Water Primrose. <laughs> <coughs> Okay, here's another one that um, is absolutely my bugabear when I'm wearing my county hat, Eurasian water milkwood. <laughs> Again, it's just another thing that we could, we need help um, di with more science. Yes. Well, I have a spring fed pond, mm -hmm. and it's covered with water lilies that came in, I think, with ducks. Yeah, yeah, that and, happens. And I don't, you can't get rid of them. I mean, they're just, I don't know if it's one plant. Because if you start pulling up, they're all just tangled together. In the right, roots. right, yeah, yeah. Well, um, and and um, I can I can help you with that, but but not not during this presentation right, right okay, now. Yeah. But but I'd be I'd love to talk to you um, about that later. Um, okay, so now I I I just wanted to have you imagine the Clear Lake Environmental Research Center when it's here. Uh, these photographs, by the way, were taken by Will Evans, um, one of our directors. He walks down to the same spot um, on the edge of the lake every day, twice a day, and takes a photograph. So he now has a log of photographs going back six years. Um, and it's, it's always amazing to see these photographs because there's not two of them alike. Um, and so what I want you to do is, you know, 
imagine having an education outreach facility on the shores of this lake and, and being able to have um, children come here, spend an overnight, having a dormitory to sleep in and, and that kind of deal where they can really get um, into <coughs> Clear Lake and why it is so special. Helen, where are others like this? The, there are, there are a few, but th for instance, Lake Tahoe has kind of, sort of, a similar thing. They call, they're called the Tahoe Environmental Research Center, um, but they don't do as much with education as I would hope. Um, they're far more scientifically geared, um, and, and, and they actually don't even like you coming into their facility without forewarning, which to me is crazy. But, but, but that's an example of a UC-operated facility. The Tahoe Environmental Research Center is a nonprofit corporation, but they are absolutely married to UC Davis. And it's UC Davis that directs what they do and how they do it. Well, UC Davis was here at the Carnegie They Library. were, they were, yes. Um, and, and I've got no problem with that, with them working under the Clear Lake Environmental <coughs> Research Center because I would stay independent. Mm -hmm. Tahoe has not. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, there, I, uh, I am, although I'm a UC Davis alumnus, I am not connected in any way other than of being an alumnus with UC Davis or, or any other educational institution. So I know I can stay independent. Whereas if I was um, a UC Davis professor starting the Clear Lake Environmental Research Center, then I think I might be a little bit more um, in tune to what UC Davis might or might not want to do. It's just, you know, I'm, 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 just, I'm just trying to put it out that, you know, if, if we stay independent, if we stay the nonprofit, then we are not beholden to anybody other than the directors. <coughs> what about funding, though? How are you? Fun well, it makes funding actually very easy. If you're a nonprofit corporation, your funder is more likely to be a foundation. There's a tremendous uh, industry in Northern California with school kids going to places for a few days right. during right. the school year right. to do this kind of thing. Yes. And they spend hundreds of dollars to do that. Exactly. So so why shouldn't they be able to come here? They should. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and, for, and, and and just imagine you know, a group of kids coming here and learning such extraordinary stuff that we can teach them here, and then going back home and telling their parents you know, I had a fabulous time at Clear Lake. You got to know about this, this, and this, and this, and this, and then the parents are going <coughs> to. So it, it, I think it'll be a snowball effect. I'm hoping so. Well, but it's very sustainable because every year yep. there's a new group of students. Exactly. And and you do however many programs you want. Right. You got people coming in every year. Exactly. Year year. So then, so then we're going to be able to educate the water scientists. Um, we're going to have the scientific laboratory. Um, I want the laboratory to be able to analyze all the physical, biological, and chemical parameters that are usually <coughs> studied um, in terms of water um, and the bottom of reservoirs and lakes. So all the, the benthic, the sediment, um, um, all, all that type of sampling should be available um, in our laboratory. What, what is what? What is benthic? Benthic is on the bottom of the lake. Um, so then we're, we're going to have, I'm hoping for multiple um, facilities um, on the shores of Clear Lake, but certainly um, if, we, if we take on the um, Merrymount facility, then we could have our boat and dock at the uh, Lucerne Harbor. 
which would, I mean, is just like a stone's throw away from Marymount. Um, so that's what we're kind of thinking about right now. Um, we've also had offers from other people, um, private parties, that are willing to share their facilities um, and boat docking facilities. So then we, um, again, um, I, I'm just thinking about seeing, you know, loads of, of kids coming here for two to three day stays. We'll have a, they'll, they'll stay in a wonderful dormitory um, and then they'll go back home with m many, many stories about this beautiful lake. And then we've, we've got to think about public-private partnerships. Um, and that obviously is going to be the way to get steady, reliable funding. Um, and I, I'm, I'm not w worried at all about getting funding for the Clear Lake Environmental Research Center. We've already kind of um, put feelers out. And there are several foundations um, in this <coughs> state um, that would wish to um, give to this cause. So it's, it's not that people don't want to do the right thing, don't want to give, it's they've had nothing to give for. What, 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 what purpose? I mean, the, the Valley Fire was, was amazing at um, getting people with you know, deep pockets to give. Um, but, I, but I think we need, we need something more, a lot more permanent. I'm hoping we'll never see anything like that again. But we need something permanent for people to be able to give to because this is Clear Lake, that is, is a national treasure. Okay, so then we're obviously we, we need the world class conference facility. <laughs> and so I want you to imagine the Clear Lake Environmental Research Center. But I don't want you to be imagining it for very long, because it <laughs> is going to happen. We're visualizing it. Good. Yes. <laughs> so that's me. Thank you very much for your attention. And there's my contact information. And if any of you would like a, a um, car window sticker for clerk, you're welcome. Um, Carolyn, have you? Is thought of partnering or have somehow bought a new like Watch? Did that ever happen? No, it, 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 it will happen. I, uh, I need to, those, those folk, those agencies, the, the, those entities um, need to uh, make it known to me that, you know, that they, they would love to do some kind of partnering. Um, then absolutely, I am. I am not leaving anybody out. I don't. I. Do, it's just not in my nature. Uh, but but I don't know everybody. I don't right. know everything. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. yeah we need, probably need, we more need to know about these logistical groups. things before something like that would exactly. happen. Exactly. But they don't need much. I mean, right. doesn't need much people camp out for some of the trips. Right, right, you know, right, right, so right, yeah. I can see, you know, yeah. some, some researchers. But, but, I mean, think about the, 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 the clarity of our air, our very, very clean air, and we need more people coming here <coughs> to view the sky. And we have the means of doing that, it's just we don't, we don't you know, get the word out. So th that's a, that would be another very important reason for our existence is to shine a light on 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 this county, if not only only Clear Lake, and get people coming here. Do you have any kind of timeline that you're looking at trying to get started, or by the end of this year we will have a facility. It'll happen. It'll happen. There, so many people want it to happen. It'll happen. Well, are you taking a floor of the building? Of the yeah, uh, uh, we're, we're, we, we will take part of the first floor and um, six of the offices in the uh, second floor, on the second floor, which is really the main floor. Yeah. Any more questions? Thank you so much. You've been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.